Hello, everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Barry Parker for Capital Link's Trending News podcast series, and uh, delighted to have with us today Eddie Valentis. He's the chairman and CEO of uh, Pixis Tankers, which is a product uh, tanker company. They're, they're on the NASDAQ. So uh, let's begin. Uh, Eddie, it's been uh, at least two years since the last time that we did an interview. So I know you've, uh, you've had a lot going on. So uh, let's hear what you've been doing for two years. Hi, Barry. Nice to see you again, uh, even uh, through the uh, Zoom, uh, Zoom call. But uh, I'm sure we, we'll catch up face-to-face uh, uh, -face very soon. Well, two uh, years yeah. ago, we didn't, we didn't know we could do all this two years ago. Yeah, amazing, huh? <laughs> uh, so this uh, two years, I mean, you know, you would expect uh, the market being so poor in the last two years because of COVID. You would expect that uh, companies like us, uh, small size companies, would, would have, have nothing to show. But on the contrary, I think we have uh, done a substantial um, um, repositioning of the company in the last two years. Uh, starting from the beginning of uh, 2020, we sold uh, one of our oldest tankers, a 2006 uh, non-eco vessel. Um, later, uh, um, in, to, uh, in 2021 and beginning of this year, we uh, sold the two small units, uh, which were non-core assets for us. So we concentrated the company in a pure to being a being a pure MR. Uh, play uh, company, product tanker company. Uh, also, during the last two years, we have done very attractive debt equity financings. Uh, we have raised approximately 36 million of uh, common stock and convertible preferreds uh, at very attractive terms, I must say, Barry, and I have to stress that, that we did everything at uh, levels which were above our uh, NAV. Uh, we have as a result, we have strengthened our balance sheet and uh, we have enhanced our work capital. Uh, we, and uh, most importantly, we have funded new vessel acquisitions. Um, in, the, in the same time, uh, we increased our share, uh, share float and improved our trading liquidity. Uh, during the last uh, year, in 2021, we acquired, as I said, two vessels, uh, the Pixis Carteria and the Pixis Lambda. These are eco vessels, one being built 2013 and the other one 2017. And uh, also we have done substantial refinancings of, uh, of previous debts, approximately 61 million of loan refinancings at more attractive, attractive terms than the ones uh, we had. Uh, also, we have completed four special surveys, uh, including uh, installment of ballast water treatment systems. And uh, recently, uh, last week, we have regained compliance uh, with our NASDAQ listing. Um, now we have um, uh, 10.6 million uh, common sh uh, shares outstanding, 4.8 of, 4 million of which are public float. So I guess that uh, for a small company like us, this is substantial news uh, uh, for the last two years, uh, uh, which we have been almost locked up. Now yeah, you've been pretty, pretty busy buying, selling, refinancing. It's all good stuff. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the, the sector. Uh, Pixis is a, a specialist in the uh, in the product tanker sector, very, very specifically uh, MR tankers. Uh, so let's talk about first about the the current state of, of the sector, and then then we're going to work our way uh, towards the the outlook. But let's let's talk about where we are now. Great. Yeah, sure. Uh, of course, uh, this is the most important. Point, where we stand in the market, and uh, I have to say that we've uh, we're, we're currently experiencing uh, a very good market, which um, uh, really we were hoping for the past two years. Let's not forget that the, with the beginning of the pandemic in 2020, we were all hoping for the market to recover back then. But of course, COVID-19 destroyed uh, the market back then. So we didn't have the upside we were waiting. So two years in the waiting for us, market is coming back. Um, uh, it seems that the economy, especially the Western economies, are recovering from COVID-19. Uh, 
Um, we've seen uh, a lot of demand, improving demand for uh, refined products. Um, uh, in addition, we see lowest inventories uh, historically um, uh, everywhere. And of course, let's not forget that the, the unfortunate uh, 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 fact of the war um, of the invasion of Russia um, uh, in Ukraine has created a market dislocation, which currently um, 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 benefits the product tech sector. Um, at the same time, this dislocation will also uh, create um, uh, ton mile expansion. And um, since March, we, we've seen the Atlantic uh, market recovering substantially, followed by the Pacific market uh, in April. Um, um, this high demand has led to very high uh, utilization of refineries, especially in the US. In the US, let me say, just say that the current uh, utilization is running above 90% uh, capacity. Um, so very high uh, demand for diesel and gas oil. And of course, recently, with, especially with summer approaching, we see very high demand for transportation fuels as well, um, uh, jet, uh, jet fuel and gasoline. Um, the summer months are very close to us and uh, therefore uh, the inventories are getting even tighter. Um, um, with the remaining refinery plans, uh, maintenance per schedule almost done. We, we see additional capacity coming in the market. And um, uh, we do not see the closure of refineries that happened during the pandemic, which was appro approximately 3.8 million barrels per day, according to our calculations. This is not coming back to the system. Therefore, there will be uh, uh, substantial demand created and more ton mile demand uh, for product tankers. That's that's longer voyages. They they close them uh, in the uh, in in the OECD countries, and then they have to come come longer distances. That's correct. And uh, let's not forget that with the sanctions in uh, Russia, and uh, currently uh, Europe is also imposing uh, uh, strict sanctions to uh, Russia. We expect that approximately 1.4 million barrels per day of Russian exports, which will just be uh, um, uh, needed to replenish for this uh, um, Russian cargo. So this will come either from the US, the Middle East or Asia. So substantial news there for the product tanker sector uh, going forward. Yeah, well, you beat me to the question actually, which uh, was my, my next question is just, uh, you know, the outlook, uh, yeah. you know, which you started to talk about. And I don't know if it's possible to separate the, you know, just the market dynamics, you know, if there wasn't a war going on from the, you know, the geopolitical uh, impact you started to talk about, but uh, just curious if you have, have further color on the outlook. Well, you know, leaving the war aside, uh, as I said earlier, we were expecting the recovery of the product tanker sector since the beginning of 2020. If you remember IMO 2020, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera the story back then, and we yeah. were, it was really looking good for us. Unfortunately, pandemic created or destroyed all uh, demand out there. Therefore, we've been in two years in waiting. So, uh, leaving the war aside, I, I'd say that you know, and um, you know, with uh, predictions for the GDP growth around 3.6 percent this year, and uh, from the IEA uh, projecting that 4 percent uh, increase in refined product demand. So we were, in any case, expecting a better year. As I said earlier, the inventories were, in any case, at low levels. We were all expecting that you know the traveling season will be strong because the Western economies are coming out. So the fundamentals were there. Now, what is added on top of that is the uncertainty and of course the, 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 the dislocation that this war and the sanctions are creating for the sector. This is uh, an extra which is coming on top of what the fundamentals were before. Also, let me add to this scenario, China. China currently is closed down. Um, uh, as soon as China opens up and demand for transportation fuels comes uh, at, at high levels in China, we will also see a tightening of supply for uh, transportation fuels as well. So an extra there um, um, scenario which will benefit the product tanker sector is the Chinese economy opening up and how it will affect the market, which will be, we believe it will be a positive uh, on a positive side. 
Um, regarding inventories, let me just uh, mention that the US uh, currently uh, lands, uh, has its lowest diesel inventories in the last 18 years. Um, the gasoline inventories in the US are 10% lower than the historical averages. Also, let's, let me put to, the, to this uh, uh, story the addition of the refining capacity, which is running at very high levels in the US and uh, up, above 90%. And um, uh, with tightening of, of lowering of inventories, tightening of supply, et cetera, et cetera, there might be, there might be a, a, a case where the US ne will need to import as well uh, uh, refined products. So a lot of moving parts uh, generally in the equation. Um, and overall, I think it will benefit uh, the product tanker sector. Yeah, it seems, seems to be a very rosy outlook, Eddie. Let, let's talk about the, the, the company with, with, with Pixis. We've, we've talked about, uh, you're, you're in the MR, our sector, that's really, uh, you know, all I, I've said, but wonder if you could talk about the, the operating strategy uh, of the company. Yeah, we chose to be in a, we chose to be in a sector, uh, the MR product sector, which is the workhorse of the industry. Let me not repeat that, but the MR is the most popular vessel in the, in the product act tanker cat category, especially our vessels, which are more sophisticated, IMO3, et cetera, et cetera. We, can, we have more uh, cargos that we can carry. We have more um, flexibility um, 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 uh, what, comparing to our uh, uh, bigger cousins, the LR1s and the LR2s. So the MR is the workhorse of the industry. Uh, we are focusing as a company in eco types. Um, as I said earlier, we, we sold uh, the older vessel, which was um, non-eco. And of course, we sold the two smaller tankers that we had in the fleet, which, which were non-core. So the, as a company, we're concentrating in the MR uh, segment. And um, uh, supposing uh, we get the opportunity um, to do a, a, a meaningful and um, accretive transaction raising equity, we, were, we are definitely uh, would like to grow the company uh, with additional more eco uh, um, tonnage. Um, regarding, um, or, or let me just point out regarding the fundamentals, which I, I forgot earlier. Uh, let me point out the very interesting uh, story of supply. Um, supply of vessels currently is uh, very, it looks very very attractive, um, and uh, overall we estimate. The increase of uh, the fleet, approximately 2% annually for this year and next year, um, excluding any uh, uh, scrapping activity which might accelerate. So uh, overall, we see a very balanced market going forward. Sorry for this <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. interruption, but I forgot to, no, 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 to mention fine. that, which is a very important, uh, because we talked about demand, but I think talk up for supply at all. Um, going back to the company and uh, 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 its activities, I, I, this is the uh, for us the sector to be. Operationally, we'd like to have a balanced fleet, i.e. vessels both in the spot market and in uh, time charter employment, therefore having the cash flow visibility. And uh, whenever we see an opportunity, which we believe it's a good opportunity, we will take it and we will uh, book vessels for longer periods as well. So. Uh, uh, overall, uh, a balanced strategy focusing on the MR uh, sector. Um, our uh, leverage is at very attractive levels, considering all the refinancing we've been through last year. So I think the company is in a very good position to take advantage of the market that is coming mm -hmm. to us. Very well deserved, I, I have to say, <laughs> after all these years of pain. Been waiting a little and, bit. Yeah. Yes, yes. At le you know, all our all the other shipping sectors are doing well except uh, the tanker yeah. sector and this is unfortunately on the back of the you know unfortunately event of the war uh, the, 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 the sector is doing well good but in any case it would do better because the fundamentals were good right. what about some of the time charter equivalents and put put some actual numbers uh on it the uh the, the dollars per day the vessels are earning yeah, I, uh, we have uh, remaining uh, for Q2, uh, 
uh, we have approximately 65% of the days covered at approximately uh, 27, 28,000, close to 28,000. Um, so yeah, overall, this is the average you, must, you might expect uh, for Q2. Supposing market continues um, like that, because uh, as I said, uh, most of the fleet now is operating in the spot market in the US Gulf, earning substantially more than, than 28,000, but for average and uh, to be on the safe side, we're estimating 28,000 approximate time charter equivalent today. Okay. Now we started, uh, you, you mentioned a uh, little bit earlier, just the, the selling vessels and uh, renewing the fleet. Uh, and you're thinking about, you might, you, you, you might expand it. Uh, could you talk in a little more detail just about the renewal and the uh, expansion plans? And then from that, we'll kind of work our way into questions of, 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 of capital allocation, how, you, you know, how, 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 how that fits with uh, your capital allocation. Well, you know, uh, we're, uh, expansion for us is uh, relative to the um, um, capital raising. So it's important for our stock to appreciate. It's important for uh, shareholders to realize that the environment, uh, product tanker environment is uh, improving. And uh, as soon as that happens and the stock price is trading at comfortable levels, we're very uh, um, uh, comfortable and very confident that we can do a transaction to raise equity in order to uh, acquire assets. Of course, with the increase of the market, it goes without saying that the asset prices are appreciating as well. Um, so we expect uh, 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 an elevated asset price environment for the next uh, uh, um, um, period, but that will not affect a uh, purchase decision which makes sense for us and it will improve uh, uh, the capacity of the fleet. So uh, we will definitely look at expanding the fleet. Um, as I said, with uh, uh, eco MRs, uh, MR vessels, preferably built after 2013. Um, I remind you that 2013, the first eco vessels in the product tanker sector were delivered. Um, uh, so uh, we're looking at this sort of tonnage. Okay, and the leverage uh, idea, you, you try to keep it at, uh, at the same levels? Definitely, uh, you know, the uh, leverage of the company has been uh, the recently uh, in, uh, mid 54-55%. Uh, uh, it's a very comfortable uh, level to uh, debt level. Yes, we would ideally would like to, see, to, to keep the same debt level for the company going forward. Um, I must say that we have uh, uh, substantial uh, bank, uh, banking relationships and we are very confident that uh, as soon as the um, equity uh, 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 issue is um, resolved, uh, then we, we, we are confident that we can get uh, debt uh, terms at very, uh, attract, uh, very attractive debt terms going forward. Okay, and then you'd look at uh, when you're uh, acquiring vessels, obviously they, they have to be uh, accretive uh, in, in your calculations. Correct, they have to be accretive. Uh, again, we take the view that this is an improving market, um, still asset values uh, are within uh, uh, reasonable, reasonable levels. Uh, so we will uh, definitely um, go for uh, uh, in case we are, we are given the opportunity, we, are, we will definitely go for uh, further acquisitions. Okay, well, it's, it, it, it's a good story. I'd like to give you the chance, just if you could, just uh, we've, we've had a wide ranging conversation, but if you could just uh, sum up the, uh, you know, the, the, the investment case, if you uh, have to explain to an investor, like what are, what, what are the competitive advantages uh, you know, of Pixis and what, what's the investment case? Yeah, I mean, uh, starting from the uh, f first and foremost, I mean, the, the most important thing uh, that the company is transformed. Uh, from uh, uh, the beginning of this year, we're talking about uh, maybe a smaller company size-wise because we sold it to small, uh, smaller tankers, but bigger in that weight because we added two MRs. Um, 
but a, 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 a perfectly um, uh, straightforward story. Um, um, a public a company, small, but with potential. Let's start with that. Uh, management uh, substantially um, invested in the company. Let's not forget that 55% of the company is owned by insiders. So we have skin in the game. Uh, we want to create shareholder va value, and this is our goal going forward. Let's not forget that I'm, I'm starting with that and I'm emphasizing that uh, issue. We're a pure play uh, MR uh, company, so uh, we focus on the most commercial and the workhorse of the industry, which is the medium range product tanker. We have a very, very disciplined uh, cost uh, structure. I think we are, uh, our cost uh, basis is compared to our peers with, with much larger fleets. So we have a very um, uh, daily operational costs, which are very, very competitive. Um, and uh, we have a young fleet. I mean, uh, our age um, is, uh, our average age, which is 8.8 uh, years, is four years younger than the overall uh, fleet, that the average age of the overall fleet. So um, um, overall, I think we have a, a good structure, a good company, hands-on management, and uh, we look forward to take advantage of opportunities whenever they come. And most importantly, let's not forget, we have skin in the game. We are uh, we own a substantial part of the company, so our interests are closely aligned with the interests of, the share, of our shareholders. Okay, I think we'll uh, we'll we'll wrap it up. It's a it, it's a great story and uh, great great to talk to you again, Eddie. It's been uh, been been a while, and I hope uh, we'll uh, see each other in person again before. Uh, too long. So I want to thank you for coming on. It's Eddie, Eddie Valentis, Chairman and CEO of Pixis Tankers uh, on the NASDAQ. And this is Barry Parker for Capital Link's uh, Trending News podcast series. So thanks very much, Eddie. But Barry, thank you for the opportunity of telling the story of uh, Pixis. Uh, this is PXS at, uh, listed at NASDAQ. Thank you very much. Okay. See you later. Thank you. See you.